Look at that timing. Ooh. That's Ragnaros. Hey guys. The winner of this month's poll is a top 10 list. It's the first one I've done, and the subject is the top things to look forward to for the upcoming 1.12 official classic servers for World of Warcraft. I've had plenty of videos about classic, kind of talking about this stuff one by one, but for this one, I'd like to take an yes. overall oh! look and share my yes. top 10 list of things it. I'm personally looking forward to. Miscellaneous RPG elements. Look at all those, the bullets. Ooh. Starting with number 10, it. first up, we have the general RPG elements. Over the years, for the sake of convenience, a lot of the stuff in the game has been simplified, as That's you know. A really good warrior. We used to have weapon skills for each weapon type. Yeah. The more proficient you were, and the more you leveled them, you had a better hit chance and whatnot, so it was always important to keep everything leveled in case you get a big upgrade of a different weapon type. Those mobs used to be elite too. Another RPG day. element would be different weapon speeds. Everything is all normalized now, but back in the day, different weapons 8. had different speeds, and what you wanted varied depending on your class and specialization. Yo, is this guy on a fucking private server? Look at his fucking Don't show, dad. don't show, don't show, don't show, at, don't no, show. No, I don't know if he is or not, I have no idea. Um, look at this. He, uh, he's got Corrupted Ashbringer, Might of Minithil, the uh, sword, I don't know if this is or not, there's no way for me to tell. Um, he's got the Ashkandi, Grand Marshal's Claymore, the fucking Sulfuron, Zenrock, this is insane. This guy's got like the, like every good weapon in the fucking game. But back in the day, Jesus different Christ. weapons had different speeds. And what you wanted varied depending Freon's on your class vein. and specialization. Yeah. Wow. Typically, you wanted slow weapons, but for the rogue, for example, you wanted a fast offhand for poison application. Okay. Maybe you had a weapon with lower DPS, but a higher damage range. It introduced choices that made you think a bit. Other stuff would be the hunter ammo, skill ranks, shaman totems, rogue poisons, lock picking. In general, just the complexity of the game is something I'm really looking forward to again. And Actual it earns the number 10 spot in my personal list. Traits. Next, we have keys, Ooh. or keying in general. Another is, feature yeah, that's a thing of the past. To zone into the raids, and even some of the dungeons and zones, you needed to Ooh, collect keys. Anything concrete from yes, actual dude. keys to more abstract stuff like buffs that attune you to a raid. That's the next Ramos. They were all over thing. the place, so much so that players even got a special bag called the key ring to hold them all yep. because they were running out of inventory space. Yep. And if you had them, you were the man, and it guaranteed you a spot in a dungeon just for that alone. I remember, so, uh, once again, we can catch them all just like Pokemon and the become the key masters. The key masters. That was so good, man. We need a healer. Okay, man. The music, dude. Oh man. I don't I don't know what to say, it's just beautiful. It really is. There it is. In 2010, we of course got the Cataclysm expansion, and in its pre-patch came the Sundering, where the world of Azeroth was changed forever. Not just geographically, but each zone had all of their quests reworked, and the this old world really that sad. we knew Remember and love happened. was gone forever. I wish they never did this. The changes also reached into dungeons, including yep. reworks such as the Dead Mines and Shadowfang Keep, and even raids such as the old Zulgarab. too. They changed the bosses. This was also when they added flying in the old world as well, so it was probably the most volatile change to have ever happened with the game over the course of a single patch. I would agree with that. Yeah. Traveling was much more difficult in general, you as you would imagine, but more importantly, the world felt much larger if you weren't able to simply fly over everything. This was back sure. when Night Elves had that dreaded gauntlet through the wetlands to reach Ironforge. 
fewer flight paths, only it, boats and zeppelins to travel between the continents. Mages were in high demand, that's for sure. It's like loading up an old RPG. Even if it has flaws, it's an experience that's timeless, and many of us look forward to revisiting the old Azeroth that left us eight years ago. This is the same way I feel about Secret of Mana. I used to play that whenever I was a kid. I used to love that fucking game. The leveling, man. You the can't mention the old the world game. without yep. talking about the leveling. It was so good. The journey to the max level was just that, a journey. That's Not just right. the raw amount of experience needed versus the amount you get via questing, but things such as no flying mounts like I mentioned, yep. no dungeon finder, no questing waypoints, and so on made it a much more daunting task to go all the way from level 1 to 60. The difficulty of the mobs in general will also be something that'll take people by surprise, I think. Some I people that. say yeah, that vanilla true. leveling was just more time consuming and not harder, which I completely disagree with. It was a lot fucking harder. Every quest what do you in mean? the game is now soloable. You had to wait for but the quest back then, to you had things such as elite quests that required a full party yeah. to complete, and even some of the non elite quests were rough for certain classes. This was back when pulling more than one oh. enemy as a low-level warrior meant certain death. Really? I had no idea. Combine all of this with wow. the need to eat and drink after every other yep. fight, the no flying or dungeon finder like Look I mentioned, gear, these dungeons set. being guarded with elite enemies so you had to go yep. through the entrance together, mounts being obtainable at level 40 and 60 instead well, of 20 yeah. and 40, and being insanely expensive in general. Having to actually read quests gold. to find out where it's to like go, the now. elite quests, having to train skills, thus having no gold, yeah. and I can go on and on. It was a journey, and quite the accomplishment, and alts in general were much more rare because of look the extreme gear, amount of man. time required. That's what my guy used to look like. Actually, no, That's a not. level 39 warrior, dude. That's right. He's gonna get his Something that kept you going, level. though, were the talent points, so... What the let's fuck, talk about dude? Too. What? The old talent system in World of Warcraft worked like this. You had three talent trees, one for each- What the fuck? Just a random fucking what 100 fuck, dude? gifted stubs! Holy shit, yo, thank you, bro! Bethquack coming in hard with the fucking 100 gifted community subs? Holy shit, man, I really fucking appreciate that. Oh my god. Thank Wait, you so like much, Bethquack. Wait, why? Oh, because he, he was calling me, like, McCuck the last time he was donating. Oh, no, no, shit. he, no, I think he apologized no, he's a for fucking that. loser. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 he's no, no, a no, fucking no, no, loser. No, 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 that's not true ah, at all. fuck Yo, you, Beth Quack, Quack, dude, I you. love that guy. One You're a fucking best. loser. No, 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 no. You're actually no. a fucking loser. Uh, fuck you. No, 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 no. You're piece Beth, of Yo, shit. dude, thank you so much for the hundred gifted subs, man. What the fuck? Thank you so much, man. Oh, my God. I really fucking appreciate that. Thank you so much, Beth Quack. Wow. I... I haven't had that happen in a long time. Thank you so much, man. I, I really, really do appreciate that. Thank you very much. Do you have a chili stain on your shirt, right shoulder? No, uh, that's dandruff. Okay, let's get back to the video. Specialization, even including druids, because at this point they had feral, which was for both DPS and tanking, restoration for healing, and balance for being laughed at. At every level from 10 to 60, you got a talent at? point which you could spend in Ooh. any one of these trees. That's dirty. Fire mages were just people who had most of their points in the fire spec. Yeah. They still had frostbolt, arcane missiles, and whatnot, but their fire spells were the most powerful. And some people opted for hybrid specs as well, so they were a little skilled do that at before everything. Blizzard put rails on Not everything. the most powerful for sure. And you didn't see it a lot at max level, but the yeah, choice was right. there. As I said, you unlocked the ability to view these trees at level 10. Tactical and each level, sucked. you had a choice of how you wanted to build your character. Mm, not true. I hate it. Some people say that these old talent trees give you the illusion of choice, and at the end game, there's maybe one or two that are viable. I have to agree with this, but in my opinion, you should take more than just the end game into consideration. Yeah. The end game will always be the focus of MMOs, and that's the way it should be. Most people but didn't one of the things there. that Who people cares? miss about vanilla, like I said, is that adventure to level 60. 
Over the years, that level experience has kind of been neglected it and sure moved has. further and further out of focus to now where it's just kind of an obstacle to get through instead of its own thing. I think about, think yeah, about BFA these trees leveling. weren't very flexible Why at the max level, but when you were leveling, you were always looking you forward to that next point because you became just a bit stronger. Maybe it's just another crit percentage, or maybe it's a big level yeah. like 40, and you actually Ooh. get a skill. That's a it big served one. as a carrot on a stick, and it did a good job of making you feel like you're slowly but surely growing in power. And it gave you that long-term character investment and growth, said feel. and to That's only look at it from the endgame perspective isn't the fairest criticism, in my opinion. Very true. So, Old Talent Trees, number 6. I need to take a piss. Coming I'll be right back. I've got to take a piss. Sorry, guys. BFA leveling is playing CCRs. stars. I would pay a hundred dollars. A hundred? No, two hundred. No, not two hundred. That's too much. I would pay. Uh, all right, wait. All right, I would pay. Fuck BFA leveling. I'll be right back. One Twitch Prime, two Twitch Prime, three Twitch Prime, four Twitch Prime, five Twitch Prime. 6 Twitch Prime, 7 Twitch Prime, 8 Twitch Prime, 9 Twitch Prime, 10 Twitch Prime, 11 Twitch Prime, 12 Twitch Prime, 13 Twitch Prime, 14 Twitch Prime, 15 Twitch Prime, 16 Twitch Prime, 17 Twitch Prime. <sighs> I don't, I don't actually get paid for being on this stream. Just so you guys know, I just do it for fun and for free. He does it for free. Okay, sorry. I'm back. Number five, we have the old skill system. Okay. Once again, kind of going hand in hand with the talent system here. Over the years, the skills in the game have also been pretty simplified. Today, with the exception of one or two spells, arcane mages have all okay. arcane spells, only frost mages have the frost spells, and so on. It's what I mentioned earlier with the talent system. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait, However, pause this, in pause vanilla... This, pause this, pause this. Beth Quack donated a thousand dollars. He's a fucking loser. Who he cares? said, he said, never called him a cuck. Yeah, he did. Well, I mean, he gave me a thousand dollars to say that. Yo, dude, thank you so fucking much. Oh my God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, man. What the fuck? Oh my God, man. Thank you so much, Beth Quack, for the thousand dollars. Oh my God. Thank you so much, man. I, I don't even know what to say, except for thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, it really means a lot. Nice to see you watching Mad Season's vid. He's one of the best classic YouTubers, in my opinion. His WoW memory series is the absolute best. Love, Triple X. Thank you very much, Johnny Boy Silver, too. Holy fuck, man. Thank you so much. Like, can we get some hearts in the chat for Beth Quack? Oh, my God. Thank you so much, man. I, I, I just want to say that right now. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, okay. Everyone had everything, and what you were good at just depended on where you put your talents. Yeah. Today, action bars look like this, but in classic, it was more like nope, this. Nope, you're still a fucking loser. Nope. Come on, dude. Nobody, why? nobody gives a fuck. You're still a fucking loser well, just because you have money. Well, just because he has money doesn't mean he's not a fucking loser. Well, why, well, why, why, I mean, like, come on, man. Like, give the guy a break. Like, I mean, you just give me a, a hundred No, stuff. you give him a fucking break. Oh, you obviously are on, anyway. Man. Why don't you go suck his uh, dick, oh, too, dude, huh? I'm not gonna suck Oh, you give me money. Oh, oh give you're the best, fuck. dude. Oh, dude, oh okay. yeah, go ahead and shit all over oh. my friend, dude. Yeah, fucking call me. What do you mean, dude? What do you mean? Give me a hundred gifted subs, What do you mean? I mean, it's a hundred gifted subs, dude. I mean, this guy's a fucking loser. Oh, come on, man. You're just mad, dude. 
what do you yeah, mean? Yeah, because dude? he calls me McCuck like, for I've no never reason. Seen him say, loser. He's even donated Fuck him, dude. Say that, dude. What do you mean? No, I don't give a like, shit. You're just trying I don't to give a drama. shit. Like, you're mad because he's trying to help me. Side. He's doing you a good thing. He's being a nice guy. Of course, I'm taking a side to give you a hundred subs, man. That's two hundred. This guy is such a nice guy. What are you talking about, man? Thank you so much. Bad question. 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 Thank you so much, bro. I really fucking appreciate that. Thank you, dude. Else to play around with. Some of them are as critical as they are now, and others are dumb little things that you can just mess around with for the sake of fun. Eyes of the Beast for the Hunter. True. Dampen and Amplify Magic for Mages. Detect Invisibility for Warlocks. All of the Paladin Seals and Auras. The Shaman Totems, those, and I could go on forever. Four extra damage. There were so many abilities in vanilla, it was ridiculous. And combine that with the fact yep. that every skill had different ranks that Look you could use. That, this is one of those RPG elements I mentioned earlier, RPG. but as you powered up these spells and learned these new ranks, you still kept the older ones. Yep. What's the point of that, you may ask? Well, it depended on your class. If you were a mage, you would always want that lower rank Frostbolt on your bar because slope. it had a faster cast time. Yep, there it is. It still had the same speed slow, so it was handy for kiting enemies more easily. Yep. Healers, I believe, used lower rank healing spells to save a mana, cool, but it was also so weird. it's stuff like that. It's back and I'm forth. sure there are more examples that I'm not thinking of too. You trained these skills every even level, if I remember correctly. You'd have to stop by your major city and visit your class trainer and usually pick and choose what skills you wanted since they were quite expensive yeah, I and everyone was broke skills. back then. It was rare to like be able to afford everything strike, unless you were using the auction one. house regularly. Once again, making that whole leveling that journey time. that much harder. I was shitty. So, the old skill system comes in at number 5. Oh, the PvP? I don't know if I'd look forward to the PvP, man. It was so busted. PvP in vanilla was also pretty unique. Since we're getting patch 1.12, mm -hmm. the state of PvP will be three battlegrounds, which That's is the right. Warsong Gulch, the Arathi Basin, right. and Eltric Valley. The best one. The right old Eltric Valley, by the way, with the all the one. NPCs and the summoning and whatnot, which will be awesome. That's right. But outside of that, we also of course have World PvP, which should be alive and well, I'm hoping. Remember, no flying, so those old battles at Tyran Mill oh, and no. South Shore may see a return, or even just skirmishes outside of the big raids. I think we might see The Blackrock Mountain, I know, was rough yep. on PvP servers, and that's not even getting into the bloodbath known as Stranglethorn Vale. I got killed in STV a number of times. Ever since the Burning Crusade and Wrath where we started sharing major cities, the Horde vs. Alliance mm -hmm. theme has sort of died down. Back then, seeing the opposite faction was far more rare, so when you did, it was on. You beat his ass. Keep in mind that this is coming from someone who mainly well, played a rogue video. back then, but as for the actual PvP itself, Ooh, it was right much here. more bursty for sure. If you had the right setup yeah, and gear so. and cooldowns, you could absolutely destroy people. Here's the most extreme it can be with the shaman named Unbreakable who had the Sulphurus legendary. It was also much more niche if I recall. Nowadays everyone has everything. Everyone has a sprint, a crowd control breaker, shield wall or whatever. Everyone has an answer whereas back then it was more of a rock paper scissors type of deal. Rogues killed Clothies, or pretty much anyone for that matter, if they had their cooldowns. Wait, what the but fuck? warriors did pretty well against them. Good mages oh, shredded that? warriors in turn, and really good mages That's shredded true. everyone, but a good warlock could counter them, yep. and so on. Yep. It made for a chaotic, but fun experience, and I'd queue up People for a like battleground any time other, of the kinda. day. One of my favorite things about Classic. The only reason why it's not number one on my list is because of the rank 14 system, not good. which I didn't like because no I think did. it supported account sharing. That is true, actually. I can I can attest to that. Very true. 
Swifty never got rank one. There's Swifty nothing quite like 13. vanilla raiding. Or not, he got Ginormous rank raids, 13, not the endless buffing, the weird loot, DKP. DKP Going back dude, to the Molten Core, Blackwing Ooh. Lair, Anixia, and even getting another shot at the old Nexramus, all with a whopping 40 players, will be quite That's the, the experience for old a lot ZA. of people. Or sorry, old ZG too. It was very time consuming, which mysterious. isn't bad if that's your thing. Just getting 40 people together and getting everyone buffed, setting yep. up groups properly, keeping track of DKP if your guild uses that, yeah, and so on took music. quite a long time. But that was the essence of vanilla raiding. I think the yep. main thing people will like is how epics will be epic again. Yep. Nowadays, getting full purples is no big deal, and it's all about no. the eye level, but back in Classic, it was a big deal to get a full set. You had to compete against many more people, and there wasn't a lot of loot to go around. Bosses only dropped like two or three if things. If you saw a guy with a full tier set, you said to yourself, That's dang, a real one. he really has no life. Or, I mean, that guy's a beast. Heck, even before everyone started raiding, yeah. they said the same thing about blues, or at least I did. I predict that things will Think be much easier this time seriously. around. Something that I maintain is one of the biggest reasons why these raids were difficult was because we all sucked at the game back then. The World of Warcraft was the first MMO for a lot of people. Yeah. Having add-ons was I'll a rarity. Everyone clicked or keyboard turned or stood in the fire. You get the picture. I think that Especially, now, 15 yeah, years I later, or whenever they finally release it, players will have a much easier time overall. And personally, I'm curious to see how Naxxramas will work now that people truly get their second shot at it. Or how many easy, people dude. know how to do the Anixia attunement so they can actually enter her lair. Yeah. So, I vanilla rating at that. number now three. Is that UBRS? Ooh. Is that Scepter of the Shifting Sands? Let's see. Oh no, these are just unique weapons. Yeah, here it is, dude. Speaking of Anixia attunement, this was quite the enormous quest chain back in the day. Yep. Solo, group, and raid quests spanning both continents. It was pretty epic, oh, and that, that leads him. me to number two right on our behind. list, yeah, and those are the epic sense. quest chains. That's another thing I miss with the game. There were so many interesting oh. and cool quests back in the day that really took a lot of time and effort to complete. The Rockdalar and Lockdalar Hunter chain, where they had to track down demons across the world and solo them. The Anathema and Benediction questline for priests. The tier 0.5 dungeon set chain where you had to summon special bosses. And many those. more, with the most extreme being the Scepter of the Shifting, Shifting Sands, Sands questline to open is, the there. gates of Ankiraj. With only a select hardcore few, even receiving a special title called the Scarab Lord, and even a legendary mount. Legendary mount. Yeah, used All to be of it legendary. gone ever since the Cataclysm expansion. I still have my scepter. It's the pinnacle of the RPG genre. You embark on these seemingly impossible feats. Mm -hmm. They require a lot of time, energy, yep. friends, yep. gold, friends. and maybe even a bit of luck. No. But when you completed them here, after man. weeks or months of grinding them out, it was quite the accomplishment. Story-wise, the quests in the current game are far better in my opinion but I miss the scale and difficulty of these old chains. Very true. Too in true. Classic, I think the quests themselves were a bit more epic, like climb to the top of a volcano to forge a skeleton too. key that grants you access to this dungeon, yeah. or gather three different color shards, each matching a dragon flight, and only awarded at the end of a super long quest chain that records solo, party, and raid content, both indoors and outdoors. It was like a raid boss it appeared Hey, in when a quest takes 40 minutes to explain fully, you know that it's quite the adventure. So, epic quest chains, number two for me. This is actually crazy for me to think of how many other things are like that, and like the Benediction, Quell Sorara, and all the minimal ones too. I never even remembered how complex this was. True. 
And the thing I'm looking forward to the most in Blizzard's official classic World of Warcraft servers is the community. Whenever I think, I think back to vanilla, are. the first thing that always comes to my mind is the community and how strong it was. This was all before cross-realm zoning, cross-realm dungeons, yes. and raiding, and all of that stuff. All of this stuff definitely has its strong points, of course, and I think with how the game is designed now, they're overall good for the game, but we've slowly lost something important over the years. It's something that you really wouldn't guess, but being tied to your own server and seeing the same people over and over had such a strong effect. Permanence and impact. You always saw that big raiding guild, maybe they were the first yep. in progression on your server, the big dicks in or maybe Forge. you saw that PvP group that has a few rank 14s. Yep. There would be one or two enchanters that had every single pattern, maybe that one alchemist who always transmutes stuff for you. Or maybe you see that one guy who helped you out in that group quest on your way to level 60. And combine all of this with those RPG elements I mentioned earlier. If you're a mage, you'll be asked for food or portals to major cities. No dungeon finder nor flying means you have to walk to the instance together. Yep. And the dungeons themselves were also much tougher, requiring some communication and coordination. Oh my god, the original It was a much more team-oriented experience, and I think just how the game was overall sort of commanded that interaction, and as a result, a community was formed. This is much harder to come by today, in my opinion. Even uh, in the major that, cities, that I'll be lucky to see true. the same person twice in a month, even if we both play every day. Each time you log in, it's a new shuffle of random nameless people from random servers. Like waking up in a new house every day, instead of just on the weekends like normal. Today, to meet friends oh. and connect with people, you usually have to go out of your way and find a guild that's recruiting. But back then, I think it happened more naturally. It was easy to find guilds, it was organic. If you ran a dungeon with someone and it went well, you maybe you ran guild, more, dude. joined their guild, yep. and so on. You see where I'm going with this. That's fucking you could right. build a reputation, either positive or negative, and there were consequences yeah. to your actions and behavior. It's Not in the name, me. massively multiplayer online role-playing game. That social experience is what makes these boy. games great, and through the combined efforts of all of this cross-realm stuff, and ease of access tools such as the Dungeon Finder and Raid Finder, it's an aspect that's diminished greatly in my opinion. And the thing I'm looking forward to the most with Classic World of Warcraft. Throughout this video, you might have said, well that sounds inconvenient, or too tough, or too time consuming, annoying, challenging, or frustrating, but it's part of the charm of vanilla. With the game being this tough, everything felt like such a huge accomplishment. Like hooray, I finally got my 60% speed mount. Blues you felt, felt rewarded good. for all of that time and energy you put into it. Today I find it harder to get that feeling. Part of it is because we've been playing for so long, sure, but you can't deny that the game being more time consuming and harder in some aspects had to also have been a part of it. It was a big part. Now, as I've said, I actually enjoy both versions of the game for what they are. I like current because it's not such a huge time investment and it's something I can just hop on conveniently do a Mythic Plus with my friends or whatever without having to plan an hour ahead and just have fun. I also find the rating more complex in general. The bosses have more mechanics and it's come a that long way true. for sure in the technical aspect. There's a lot yeah. I enjoy in current WoW, well, but this is a classic video so I won't go into that too much. And sometimes I want more complexity like with all of the stuff that we had in vanilla. We all do. It's undeniable that they both have their strengths and weaknesses, and they vary from person to person. Some people may not like current because it's a bit watered down, and at the same time, some people might not like classic because it won't ever receive content updates. Like they're even There's a trend going on right with. now that if you like current, you're not allowed to like classic, or vice versa. Personally, I say life is too short to put people down for liking certain versions of the game. If you're watching this video and you made it through 20 minutes of my monotone voice, you clearly have a love for the that's game, you guys. and I think that's something we can all appreciate. 
So, whether you're on the classic side or the current side, remember that we're all on the World of Warcraft the side at the end of the day. So play whichever you like, and I'll see you in the next one. Farewell for now, mortals. We hope you enjoyed today's video. See you again. It all started with soon. battle groups, dude. Remember that? Remember battle groups? Of my monotone voice. I want, I want you clearly have portal. a that. We're all there. It is, man. The fucking yeah. dark portal. The original dark portal. The blue one. Oh my god, dude! It's just like it's so. It was so long ago. Like I hardly. I'm also speaking as somebody who never experienced the original BGs, like without them being. Oh, personal, that's the right. Very, very beginning, like. Uh, that's right. I don't think I did a single 60 BG with them not being cross realm. So keep that in mind.